Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in dentistry and more. Today we have amyloidosis. So amyloidosis is a disease which caused by the deposition of an insoluble polymeric protein which is known as amyloid. Okay, so uh, amyloid are nothing but extracellular deposition of fibrillar proteinaceous uh, substance which looks like a waxy substance which is composed of essentially of an abnormal protein and it particularly uh, found around the supporting fibers of blood vessels and basement membranes so it is uh, associated with variety of uh, inherited and inflammatory disorders so let's see the details of amyloidosis so uh, the types of amyloid uh, so what uh, this does to our body is it alters the normal function of the uh, organ where this amyloid get deposited okay so that is it's a bad effect because it alters okay it alters the normal function of the organ where this amyloid get deposited uh, now let's see the types of amyloid mm, basically uh, the amyloid uh, consists of uh, two I mean two types of uh, fibrillar proteins are there one is amyloid uh, light chain and next one is amyloid associated protein and there are other proteins also which is known as uh, TTR or trans uh, thyretin this is trans thyretin then uh, beta amyloid protein this is beta amyloid protein and immunoglobulin heavy chain amyloid that is AH uh, these are uh, minor proteins but uh, majority uh, comprises of uh, AL and AA that is amyloid light chain protein and amyloid associated protein so what is the pathogenesis of amyloidosis so amyloidosis it is a result of uh, immunological response okay so multifactorial uh, causation and that uh, there are different mechanisms involved in different types of amyloid fundamentally it is a disorder of protein misfolding okay protein misfolding so it is a disorder of protein misfolding so let's see the pathogenesis of amyloidosis normally stimulus happens and soluble precursor of proteins and misfolded proteins will be there and it gets deposited in the organ that is insoluble fibrils gets deposited suppose uh, a causative thing is a carcinogen what happens is there will be uh, beta lymphocyte proliferation it leads to plasma cell then there will be uh, light chains that is immunoglobulin light chains it causes limited proteolysis the normal proteolysis that is a protein splitting or protein breakage is not happening and there will be accumulation of AL protein similarly in majority of the chronic inflammation cases what happens is there will be macrophage activation instead of lymphocyte so there will be intermediary interleukin 1 and 6 so liver cells uh, for example liver cells will be affected there will be precursor uh, SAA protein and similarly limited proteolysis it results in deposition of AA protein and also there can be a mutation mutation results in mutant trans uh, thyretin and there will be aggregation and deposition of ATTR protein so ultimately it leads to the deposition of insoluble protein in the organs okay and it uh, causes the imbalance of normal functioning and we can uh, classify the amyloidosis before we learned about the types of amyloid protein now we are going to learn about the amyloidosis which is based on the cause that is first one is uh, primary and secondary so in primary uh, with unknown cause and the deposition is in the disease itself okay so there is sorry 
unknown cause and it is getting deposited in the organ itself whereas the secondary uh, as a complication of some underlying non disease complication of underlying non disease it is a complication okay of underlying non disease Uh, next uh, classification based on the extent of amyloid deposition that is systemic or generalized where the prognosis will be very less uh, involving multiple organs localized amyloidosis involving just one or two organs and based on the histological uh, basis it can be a pericollagenous or peri-reticulin types Pericollagenous corresponding in distribution of uh, primary uh, amyloidosis and pericolin uh, corresponding in distribution of uh, secondary amyloidosis. Okay, and next classification based on the tissues where it gets deposited that is uh, mesenchymal or parenchymal. Uh, in mesenchymal. Uh, it is organs uh, which is derived from mesoderm and uh, parenchymal organs derived from the remaining ectoderm and endoderm. So that was about the classification of amyloidosis. Then we have the diagnosis. So how do we diagnose the uh, condition? The first thing is a biopsy examination. Biopsy examination is the commonest and confirmatory method. It is the commonest and confirmatory method for diagnosis in a suspected case of uh, amyloidosis. And also, uh, in vivo concorrate test also can be a confirmatory test. Uh, there are other tests also like electrophoresis, immunoelectrophoresis. Uh, bone marrow aspiration now let's say a little bit about the morphological features uh, we have um, different organ shows variation in morphological pattern uh, some features are applicable in general to most of the involved organs most commonly the amyloid deposits appear at the contacts between the vascular spaces and parenchymal cells okay let's see the grossly uh, gross and microscopical uh, changes happening uh, on a gross uh, uh, scenario, uh, the affected organ is usually uh, enlarged and it will be like pale and rubber consistency. And if the cut surface we are taken, it shows a firm uh, waxy and translucent parenchyma. And the positive staining with iodine testing will be there. Iodine test will be positive. Uh, whereas uh, microscopically, uh, the deposits of amyloids are found in the extracellular location okay and uh, initially in the walls of small blood vessels which produces microscopic changes and effects then the deposits are in large amount causing microscopic changes and uh, effects of pressure atrophy so this amyloidosis uh, are mostly affecting uh, kidney kidney uh, then uh, spleen liver brain heart so every organ it gets affected so that was all about uh, amyloidosis it is uh, commonly asked a short note can be asked in uh, oral pathology or general medicine so the clinical features could be weakness, weight loss, lightheadedness, syncope. If it is affecting the liver, there will be hepatomegaly with increased arterial phosphatase, splenomegaly, congestive cardiac failure, cardiomyopathy. It depends on the organ where it gets deposited. So I'll come up with a new topic in dentistry and more. Thank you.